Uh, yesterday, for the first time, price of Brent crude went above Nigeria's budget benchmark of $38 a barrel for the first time since the budget was put together and presented in December last year. Now we go to the story that Kuwait says it would be part of freezing output among member states only if other countries like Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, and perhaps Nigeria agree to this. So how sustainable is the rally that we've seen in the last couple of hours in the oil market? Let's get across to our financial derivatives company here in Lagos where uh, Adim Okwesa is standing by via Skype to talk to us. Adim, good afternoon. We hope you're having a nice time. Good afternoon, Bosun. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, talk to us. Kuwait just spoiled the oil price rally. Sorry, come again? Kuwait. Kuwait just made a statement that spooked oil price rally that we saw in the last two days, a thereabout of $40 a barrel. Talk to us about that. Yes, they said $40 a barrel. Yeah, this year has risen about 40% since lows about cents of $26, $27 per barrel. But the, thing, the fact is that the fundamentals are still weak. Supply is still excess. Demand growth is still weak. So at $40 per barrel, U.S. producers will be prompted to increase production. So that would further weigh down on prices. So all needs to be low for, for a long period of time. Yeah, we saw all below 40, about $30 per barrel for about two months. In my opinion, that is not long enough. All needs to be long, lower for a longer period of time for there to be minimum, minimal cuts in production. So I don't think $40 per barrel rally would, would be sustainable. I think it would be short-lived. Yes, let us get back to the statement by Kuwait oil minister that the country is ready to support output freeze among member states only if others agree to that. Talk to us about that statement. Do you think this is achievable? It's, the, the, there's, a, there's a discord between Iran and Saudi Arabia. There's, as long as that disagreement exists, then I don't see any agreements happening between those two. So, and we know that these, these, two, these two players, well, they want to fight, they want to maintain their market share. So, I don't see, yes, they have agreed to freeze production, but that is still not enough. We need to see production cuts. Production cuts is what, is what we need that would drive a sustainable rally in the oil prices. So, the minister is right to say that all other, other players need to come in before they can freeze production. So... That's right. So, 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 so Adim, you think, uh, unless who's willing to bail the cat? That's where we are right now. Nobody's willing to bail the cat. Nobody is willing to, yeah, like you said, nobody wants to take the first step. Everybody is waiting for the others. Everybody wants everybody to join the table so they won't lose out on market share. Now, and all, the, and all this is happening before the expected March 20 meeting among some of the member states. Do you, are, are you positive on the March 20 meeting that the Nigerian Senate NPC, a group managing director, Rebecca Chiku, talked about? I am, actually, because there's momentum. The Nigerian minister has been saying this since 20, 2015. In 2016, he said he saw, in the Davos World Economic Forum, he said he saw growing momentum amongst all producers to come together and talk about a method or a way to stabilize oil prices. So I see a meeting in March taking place, but we don't know if any positive outcome will come out of that. So, but I'm positive that a meeting will take place. All right. Okay, okay let's leave it there for today. Adim Okwesa, uh, research analyst at Lagos-based financial derivatives company. Let's stick with the business. Dangote Group is on a wide Pan-African expansion. Now, the continent's Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote, is planning to buy phosphate from Morocco. That's in the north. And potash from Congo, Brazzaville. That's towards the Central African Republic. To feed its planned fertilizer plant. Dangote has raised about $3.3 billion loan to develop $9 billion oil refinery and petrochemical complex in Lagos, Nigeria's financial capital. The group has invested $3.5 billion of its own equity. Dangote told a business firm in Lagos that his firm was close to sign a deal with Moroccan firm to supply phosphate without giving details. 
Dangote also says he planned all refinery will have a capacity of 650,000 barrels a day. That's from the initial plan capacity of the refinery, $400,000, 400,000 barrels per day. Dangote Group, which is active in cement, oil, food and sugar business, is also expanding into farming, into rice and sugar, to be more precise. Let's move on to South Africa, where the run today ended a two-day run of gains against the U.S. dollar, drifting half a percent lower against the greenback ahead of the current account data of South Africa that may set the direction for the session. In early trade, the rand was trading 15.34 against the dollar, down 0.54 percent from Monday's closing figure of 15.2575. The rand took its cue mainly from Asia, where shares took a breather after a month-long rally, the current account shortfall, largely financed by portfolio inflows, has long been a source of risk for the RAND. Now to the Horn of Africa. The Food and Agriculture Organization is appealing for urgent aid for the people in Ethiopia, Africa's second most populous nation, facing its worst drought in 50 years. The devastating drought started by the worst El Nino in records has driven Ethiopia to an alarming state of food insecurity and malnutrition. Water and animal feed are scarce in most parts of the country, leading to crop failures and widespread death of livestock. Shortage of clean water is also posing a threat to human health, with people drinking water from the same pond as their animals. Malnourished people and animals, some drinking water from Murphy Pond in the northeastern Afro region of Ethiopia, as seen in a video released by the FAO on Monday. This is dirty water and people are drinking it. So it's not only going to affect their lives, but the diseases that goes along with it. Because they are drinking water from the same pond where animals defecate, where animals are drinking. So our appeal to the international community is to support development organizations like FAO, to be able to provide safe drinking water, to be able to provide water for the animals, to be able to provide water for the crops, so that people will have a decent life. This is a catastrophe. There are extremely high livestock mortality rates due to poor grazing resources, feed shortages, and limited water in the Afro region, and this has led to sharp declines in milk and meat production, a vital source of nutrition for these communities. I lost 25 goats. We lost most of our cattle. We received animal feed and aid. Some of our animals were saved because of this support, but this is not enough and we need more animal feed support to save the remaining of our animals. The El Nino weather phenomenon has caused drought and flooding across Africa, leaving 20 million people short of food in the south of the continent and 14 million in the east, and that's according to the United Nations. The number in need is greatest in Ethiopia. Famine triggered by war and drought killed one million people in Ethiopia in 1984. The nation now has one of Africa's fastest growing economies, but many people are still small-scale farmers and herders dependent on seasonal rains. The drought is not just a food crisis. Above all, it's a livelihood crisis. FAO is urgently appealing for $13 million by the end of March for seed support. Let's take a break. We'll be right back.